I'm Jermaine Stone, Bronx, New York, born and raised, wine expert, podcaster, food lover, and ambassador for the culture. I'm traveling city to city looking for unexpected unions between amazing dishes and great wines. I'll be going from temples of cuisine to street carts to backyards, matching whatever tastes good with whatever sounds great. Bringing my favorite wines with me everywhere. I toast to that. Let me take you to the best donuts in Miami, the salty donuts. You know they call these six pack killers. <laughs> I don't know what you're trying to do to me. I'm in Miami meeting Venezuelan born chef Grace Ramirez, Spanish language food host and author. Hands down, a local success story. Hi, Ed. Welcome to Salty. We're grabbing a quick bite before our food and wine crawl through the town. These are donuts with a Miami flair. Listen, Boom. Miami flair accomplished. Looking at these donuts, I can see this place is different. Maybe we go to the back and do something a little special. <laughs> Yo, you are full of surprises. We're gonna do ube pina colada donuts. What is ube? It's sort of like a sweet potato, like a purple sweet potato, basically. Oh, so okay. that's what makes it purple. That's what makes it purple, yeah. No food coloring, no dyes, nothing like that. And then we're gonna flip these guys. With the drumsticks? With there? the drumsticks. Hey. Oh. I love that the salty donut started in Miami. It, it did. It was born in Miami. It did, it was born in Miami like we were, right? So I'm a first generation born in the US. My parents are Cuban. Amanda, my wife and co-founder, she's also Cuban American. How does your family feel about you now getting into the donut business? My mom is like, I worked in a bakery before. It was the worst job I ever had in my life. I worked so hard so you don't have exactly. to do it. And then as we really got into it, and they saw the beauty of feeding people, you know, like hospitality. I mean, it's beautiful. And you're like, it worked out after all. <laughs> I started my wine career packing boxes in a warehouse. My dad was like, no, you're not doing that. That's a dead end job. Here I am making some donuts in my area. <laughs> Everything is so important when it comes to flavor. Boom! <laughs> this is how you get the stuff in yes. there. Yes! It's like a wine, right? You need acidity, you need structure, you need balance, something crunchy, something salty, something sweet. Oh, yeah. It is fun making these donuts, I gotta say. Yeah. Uh, come on, come on. Yo. Mm. Mm. There you go. Mm. If it ain't messy, it's not worth it. You gotta no. get in there. No. The color just makes me so happy, and then you bite into it, and you have this burst of pineapple, and then salty coconut situation going on. It's just. Mm -mm. I never thought about potato and pineapple. <laughs> <laughs> You're playing with some different elements uh, right here, man. This is great. Miami, the queen of vibes. Beachside nightclubs, neon, art deco, sand, bikinis, palm trees, Cuban food. These are the top things that would usually pop in my head when I think Miami. But with Grace is my guy, it's time to tap in with the vibe queen. See past the tan lines and beaches. She's putting together a bit of a different experience of Miami. So I'm going to take you into a very unexpected Miami. I'm going to take you to the best omakaza in town. It's such a secret that you have to have an envelope and a passcode. And then one of my girls, Nicole Ponseca, she has a Filipino restaurant on the first Asian food hall in Miami. Oh, I didn't even know Miami had an Asian food hall. OK. You know, we're going to meet Chef Calvin. He's a private chef to all the celebs. Mm. He works out of a yacht. <laughs> it's nice to be rolling with someone that knows exactly where I need to be going at this stage in my life. But I'm about to take you on a wine adventure as well. It's right? going to be a good pairing. Right, let's it's do going it. to be it's good. It's already a good pairing, you <laughs> <Yeah>. know? <laughs> Blanc de Noir. Is that made from red grapes or white grapes? White grapes. White? So I hear Blanc, I'm gonna just guess white. You are wrong, I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. Blanc de Noir is white wine made from red grapes. Oh. You're gonna grab the color of the wine from the amount of skin contact it, that you it. have from it. The deeper the color, the deeper the red, the more time it spends with the skin. Even champagne is made from red grapes. Oh. Yeah, real talk. I never thought of myself as someone that taught wine education. I teach wine appreciation and helping people find a whole new way to enjoy it while at the same time breaking down the way that people not just view wine, 
but the way that people view black men in America, that's my mission. And I'm not gonna stop until people really understand that American wine culture ain't what they thought it was. Where Miami Beach is busy, it's beachy, it's chaos. But Grace tells me in the middle of all this noise, if you tap in, you know about a place that's very much under the radar. Where are you taking me? It's such a secret that we have to have a passcode. Password, please. Uh, wasabi? <laughs> Hi, how you Hi. doing? How are you? Oh, you was not kidding hey, about surprise. Welcome to Dosa. This is Miami Omakase. This secret omakase, or chef's choice in Japanese, kind of flips the usual script of these kinds of joints. When you said omakase, I expected a Japanese chef. Sebastian is from Poland. How'd you end up making sushi? In Miami. In Miami. <laughs> <laughs> I was born in Poland and I grew up in Canada. You know, when I was a kid, I watched Iron Chef Japan. And I couldn't believe how creative these chefs were and the respect they had for all the ingredients. I decided that one day I'll open an omakase. And to do that, I had to get divorced. Uh, <laughs> from my lovely ex-wife. Do you want to? Yeah. Oh, sure. Well, this restaurant started with a divorce. Uh, Astrid did tell me that if I open another restaurant, she will divorce me, and she's very good in keeping her word. So here we are. This is where things get complicated. They're ex-partners, right? <laughs> <laughs> Your ex-wife? My ex-wife, yes. My wow. business partner, my ex-wife. This is how much fun we have when her boyfriend shows up. <laughs> you should see when his multiple girlfriends come. Oh, oh OK. It's a Polish, Latino, Miami soap opera. Telenovela. Telenovela. <laughs> Sebastian and I run the restaurant every day together. There's no menu. It's decided by what I get from Japan for that week. You start thinking about how to put the great ingredients together. It's definitely not your traditional omakase experience. He creates dishes that nobody else has in the city. Today we're going to make you dry-aged Japanese salmon. It has been dry-aged for about five days, and that purifies it, breaks down the fibers. I'm gonna grill it on a Himalayan stone for just a minute or two. I'm gonna put it in a dish at 45 degrees, dress it up nicely with ikura caviar from the same salmon. Just a bit of shiso reduction cream and a few flakes of Australian truffle. I was told I was gonna be surprised by this secret seafood spot. So I brought a wine that was gonna keep you on your toes. The Blindfold Blanc de Noir. Thank you, yum. Please enjoy. Mm. This all of my favorite things on the plate. This wine has this like crisp acidity. It knows how to work with the fattiness of a uh, salmon. Then you have the savoriness from the caviar. It just complements this mouth-watering vibe that I'm getting from this wine. All of that, it just jobbed together it's so like a well. Burst of flavor, and then For you sure. get in that caviar that just kind of bursts into your mouth. For sure. How are you feeling about this pairing? Is this working for you? This is working for me. Everything about this is working for me. I love the textures here. Mm. I love the creaminess that it just complements the wine. I didn't expect the amount of savoriness that was going to be provided by the sauce and then that like combination of the caviar in there was You got that crazy. saltiness and, yes. Yeah. It feels soothing and smooth For yet sure. unexpected. This Blanc de Noir is giving fresh in-season citrus, white flower, white peach, and the hint of tart cranberry that awakens the senses mm. with a light vibrance and elegance. It's a Pinot Noir grape, which is a red grape. However, it is a white wine, you know? So here, you're gonna get the best of both worlds. Yeah, because you always think about Pinot Noir and you think about you think, a red wine. You think red wine. It's a big misconception. You know what? It like matches the salmon and it matches your outfit. <laughs> You're totally Miami. I'm so Miami. We should call you Mr. I'm Miami. So <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Not the place I'd expect right in the middle of Miami Beach. A no trespassing sign. A passworded door, 
It's definitely not that in your face Miami I remember. It's a good lesson to throw away old scripts and be prepared for anything. True or false? Red wine must be served at room temperature. True. 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 No, come on. I tried to give you an easy one. That's actually a misconception. Personal preference is the number one thing that you should think about. Throw the rules out the window. I got aunties that throw ice in the wine. They ain't wrong. You know, it's, it's <laughs> you taste it, do you like it? That's the only rule. We're in Miami's Wynwood neighborhood, checking out what seems to be a vinyl store slash lotto stand. But if you go in deeper, it's actually 1-800-LUCKY, Miami's only Asian food hall. I am so happy you're here with me, because uh, this is one of my favorite places. There's a lot of life going on, so this, these are fun places to hang out. It gives a lot of people opportunities, right? Yeah. So, you know, you share the rent, you share the love. I saw candy at the register. I got corner store bodega you vibes. Got you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Bronx boy, so I, I, I felt at home. So by now, I can see that Grace's Miami is real left field. You never know what's coming next. And that makes sense. She has some serious experience with Miami's more unpredictable moments. You go through a lot in Miami. <laughs> it seems like there's always something very unexpected happening here. And it teaches you a lot of resilience. 1992 was Hurricane Andrew and we lost our home. And you know, we had to build the home back up. And that's what you're doing like. If you get knocked down, you get right back up. And now, to be one of the first Latinas to have gone from working in a kitchen to now have representation all over the country with my own concept, La Latina Cocina, which is 85 universities across the country. That's hard work, <laughs> and it's taken a lot to get there. You're gonna meet my girl, Nicole. Okay. Nicole Ponseca, she's Filipino. Mm. She used to have a restaurant in New York, now she's here in Miami. You know, Nicole's a rock star. You know, she's, she's won James Beard Awards. She's someone that we admire as female chefs. And when she told me she was moving to Miami, I was like, yes, Miami. <laughs> we got one. Miami needs you. Felt you felt like y'all just got LeBron, like he said, <laughs> you know, I'm gonna take my talents to South Beach. My father was the one who taught me about food. He had horrible English and I had horrible Filipino, Tagalog. But when we were in the kitchen together, not only could I learn about Filipino food, but he also taught me about his childhood and what he ate with his little English. I really understood. In 2020, my father passed away of COVID. The streets of New York were desolate like I'd never seen before. My business was on the brink of closing. It was probably one of the more challenging times in my life. And I got a phone call saying, would I want to open in Miami? I said, I'm in, sight unseen. I don't need to know the numbers. I'm going to put all my chips in and, and figure it out. Today, I'm gonna be making beef sisig. Now, sisig is a dish that's classically had in the Philippines under a category called polutan. Typically, it's made with pork, but today we're gonna do it with beef. It's gonna be peppery, salty, and a little bit sour, a little bit of heat. We serve it actually in a sizzling little cast iron plate with a fresh raw egg, chef's kiss. For this hearty dish, I brought the Mayomi Bright Pinot Noir. you to my girl. Miami's lucky to have her. <laughs> <laughs> we have a sizzling skillet here for you. We got some sea sig. Have you had it before? No, never. Cool. This looks this looks really cool. So you gotta show me how to how to get down with this. We're called folding. You're folding, folding. the egg throughout Fold the it meat. on top of it like yeah, this. Yeah, that's great. Oh. So the plate is so hot and the egg is gonna continue cooking. It's gonna coat all the meat. It's gonna have a great texture. Nice. Yeah. When I come to Miami, I expect like Cuban food, Haitian food. Right, right. You know, I, I didn't expect to have like Asian food. Filipinos were primos. Yeah. Mm. You know, we were colonized by Spain for 300 years. Mm. So our language, our food, our spice, our flavor, our religion, our last names. I mean, there's no way <laughs> so much. that you can't be Filipino or meet a Filipino and understand there's like some Spanish undertones there. Mm, so we're actually right. cousins, okay. yeah. Wow. Nicole is my prima. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Nicole is my prima. Come on. <laughs> How do you say bon appetit in Jamaican? All right, go deal with the thing. <laughs> there you go. That's it. Buen provecho. <laughs> Oh my gosh, this, this beef has like this nice 
and kind of rustic character to it, you know? I feel home cooking in this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love the ginger, garlicky, and then the sweetness oh, yes. that red onion brings. I'm tasting the lemon explode and turn the flavors up, right? But then I have complementary acid happening in the wine, you know, so that acidity is gonna go well and just attach itself to the lemon in this and be a part of that flavor explosion that's happening in your mouth. You it's know? like boom, boom, Exactly, boom, it's a boom. lot happening. It's a lot <laughs> happening. And that's what you want yeah. from a pairing. This Pinot Noir is given aromas of jammy fruit and toasty oak, expressive notes of dark berry, juicy strawberry, and toasty mocha with silky texture and balanced acidity. The other thing is, I don't just pair wine with food, I also think about where you are. Like, it's hot out. Okay, so something that I could chill. So boom, so we went with the Mayomi Bright, which is lower in alcohol. So lower calories. It's true because it is 102 degrees right now. So it's it actually feels lovely. Exactly. Cheers. Hanging with Chef Grace is a reminder that when you stay ready, you don't gotta get ready every time life dishes out a new surprise. What alcohol level in wine is considered lower? What alcohol level in wine is considered lower? It's B, below 11. Miami is not Miami if you're not in a yacht. Oh, <laughs> yes, this is exactly where I want to be. Miami is an aquatic city. It's defined by its relationship with water, a way of life here. The ocean brings pleasure and pain. You never know the mood it's going to be in, so you got to stay on your toes. We're meeting Calvin, chef to Miami's elite, who invited us on a yacht to have lunch. And it's definitely looking like the ocean is playing nice today. My name is Calvin Smith, also known as Chef Cal, and I'm the owner and executive chef for Personal Chef Cal. I was tired of the corporate nine to five lifestyle, so I quit my job. I took a trip to Thailand. I was over there for 30 days. I enjoyed the world, the ocean, the people, the culture. This trip changed his life forever. It was one of life's great unexpected pivots. When I came back, I didn't have anything. I gave away my clothes, my shoes, and I, it was just literally me. I felt like I was reborn over there. I learned to forget about all the worldly possessions I have. I was in a bad position financially. I was homeless, I had to sleep in my car for a little bit. But after that, I decided to be a private chef, and I put everything into it. And now, nine years later, I made it to the top. Now, Miami's number one private chef. Today, we're having a fresh snapper with yellow rice, ponzu broccolini, topped with a watermelon salsa with mango and tomato and avocado. Today's dish was inspired by our fresh fish. We got the yellowtail snapper mixed with the Miami vibes. You got the Latin culture and my personal background with the Caribbean, so we added a little jerk to it. I'm gonna pan sear the snapper, and we're gonna season it with some island and Caribbean and Cuban flavors. I got a nice jerk season, some Latino seasonings. We're gonna get this thing marinated up nice. I'm gonna cook the rice to perfection, steam the broccolini, top it off with butter and ponzu sauce, and the salsa, you know I had to make it fresh. We're having blackened snapper, so I brought the low alcohol Kim Crawford Illuminate Sauvignon Blanc. All right, welcome to Miami, y'all. Welcome to Miami, indeed. Gracias. I made you Miami on a plate. Chef, you did Thank your thing you. on this, man. Enjoy. Gracias. <laughs> Thank you. you can tell it's cooked to perfection, and it's seasoned so well. Look at that beautiful color. Mm. Yo, this is crazy. It's modern Miami on a plate, right? Mm. It has the jerk, which is, represents the Caribbean, then you have the mango, then you have the avocado, you have the watermelon, so it's all very fresh and very vibrant. Chef did his thing, this is my vibe, you know? He got that little jerk seasoning on there. That, that's mm. bringing me back to my mm. barbecue days back in the BX, you know? My mom, what they do, they, they grab a cooler, and then you gotta season that thing from the night before. You know, everything is in the cooler. They stabbing up the chicken, just letting that jerk sauce marinate and get up in there. And I can smell it too. It, this, is, this is bringing me back home. But jerk fish is my mm. favorite because you add so much flavor into a fish. It's like the, the flavors and everything else is so big, but this wine kind of quells it down, gets you ready for the next bite. So often, I hear people tell me like, oh, I don't like this wine, I don't like this wine. I always ask, where were you and what were you doing? 
you gotta think about the situation. You know, this is the sort of thing that is super light. It's gonna go with the fish. It's gonna, the flavors all work together. However, at the same time, it's hot out here. So you want something that's crisp, fresh, mouth-watering. It's true, it's like the perfect pairing with the fish, with the vibe, with the situation, with the scene. This lower calorie New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc is coming in hot with lifted aromatics of passion fruit with guava citrus notes. Elegant with crisp acidity with refreshing herbal flavors. This is so good. So good. <laughs> oh it's so God. fresh. You've been such a great host. I've been to Miami so many times. And, you know, I love Miami. I love the people of Miami. I like the, the flow, the style but I have never experienced Miami like this. This journey has been a whirlwind for me and nothing I would ever expect, but at the same time, it feels like I'm ending it exactly how I'm supposed to. Miami took it to the next level. Uh -huh. Yo, you took it to the <laughs> next level, thank you. In life, I had to learn to live with surprises. We all do. If you get knocked down, you get right back up. When we travel, we lean on stereotypes to describe the places we visit. But coming to Miami, I'm reminded how much I break stereotypes, just like we should, for all places. Yo, so I didn't see this coming. Experiences. This is exactly where I want to be. Relationships. <laughs> and learn to celebrate those pleasant surprises that life throws at you. Like, where am I? Sign me up, let's figure it out. <laughs> What if, instead of just tolerating life's twists and turns... Where are you taking me? We all started looking forward to the unexpected. Because in those cracks between determined reality... Hey. That's where life really shines. <laughs> <laughs>